Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, and welcome to the first of what will be many creations using the new Simon Says Stamp, Stamp Timber 2018 release. I did a huge release and review video that I posted last night. Um, there'll be a link to that at the end of this video if you haven't checked it out. So for my first card, I used the new Cupcake and Donut Picture Book Wafer Dies. And I die cut them from Nina Classic Crest 80 pound solar white cardstock. And then I did the little technique I showed in my last video, which again, I'll link at the end of this one if you didn't see it, where I put washi tape on the back of the like scrap part of the paper. And then I just kind of taped the pieces back in. I will say with these images and the ice cream that I use a little later, you don't really need to do this. You could just tape the image together because like the cupcake it's two pieces and then the eyes you know it's really simple whereas some of the other picture book characters have all those little little pieces so it helps to have all the washi tape on the back but there's always ways you know to make these work I've shown so many different kind of ideas in my videos um, using these little picture book dies and just what I find easiest to you know put together the pieces or color or use different colors of cardstock etc etc and I'm just they're fun they're so fun to play with and they're so cute so um with both this little donut and the cupcake I just covered the back with the washi tape making sure to leave that little opening there for the little donut hole and then um this just gives me a place to kind of hold on to these because I want to use my Copic markers again to color them in and I kept my coloring very, very simple. I just used different shades of brown to do the donut and then to do the base of the cupcake. Just kind of working lightest to darkest and working back and forth a little bit. And keeping, again, just keeping it simple. I think you can see on screen, it's hard to tell, but like with the cupcake, there's embossed lines on the liner part of it. There's also embossed lines on the like icing swirl as well, which I just love. So I colored the bases first and then when I started coloring like the top of this donut here I decided it was actually easier just to quickly peel out the base of the donut so that the Copic markers aren't you know pushing any ink back and forth. It just made things simpler. <clears throat> and the nice thing is I don't have to worry about being perfectly neat then um, on along the edge there and I also don't have to be perfectly neat along the outer edge because that's all going to be removed when I you know take this out of here for the actual finished card. So I decided to do pink icing on top of the donut and I didn't get the little sprinkles. There's a little sprinkles wafer die. Um, I'm going to have to get my hands on that though because I was funny because I didn't know there was the one being released when I was making this. But as I was making this, I was thinking, I was like, oh, some sprinkles would look so cute on this, you know. And then I saw the die when I was linking up things for the release and I was like, yes, perfect. <laughs> so that's what I would have done. I would have die cut some little sprinkles and added that as well because it just would have been cute. Um, so after I was done all my coloring, I used my tonic, um, glitter gloss pen here, the clear one to add glitter to the top of the donut and to the frosting on the cupcake, really coating it good with all of this glitter and shimmer. And I'll turn on my flashlight on my phone just so you can see just how insanely glittery this is. So yeah, tons of glitter, shimmer, cause it's going to be a birthday card. So you need some shimmer. You need shimmer regardless, but added that and I add the shimmer first before I use my white gel pen I don't know what it is and I mentioned this in a previous video but if you add the white gel pen and you add shimmer over it or you add things like glossy accents or anything like that it ends up dissolving the white gel pen it's it's weird I don't know what it is in between the products that cause this so with the white gel pen it always works to add it at the very end. So I add shimmer or glossy accents or whatever and make sure it's dry then add my white gel pen if I want to use that for highlights or dots or whatever. And speaking of letting things dry I ended up messing up on the cupcake. I added the highlights with the white gel pen and I wasn't even paying attention and I grabbed it to go trim it out and ended up smearing it. So right about here I ended up like rubbing my thumb against it smearing it. I went along with it and tried to fix it and then in the end I ended up having to redo it. So I just re-die cut it, quickly colored it, took no time and then just replaced the little icing piece um, with a fresh one. So that's why the highlights ended up being different because I ended up doing different little gel highlights on, or white highlights on the um, finished cupcake. 
And off camera, I ended up deciding to also die cut the ice cream cone picture book die, which was released with a previous release, but it was like, they're all meant to go together, you know, ice cream and cupcakes and donuts. <laughs> so I die cut that and I colored it with Copic markers as well in the same way. And I'll have the colors of that I use listed on my blog. So I did a little, you know, kind of peach ice cream sort of um, ice cream cone. I've got my donut, I've got my cupcake. And then I pulled out Simon's Big Happy Wafer Die and I die cut that three times from white cardstock. And I'm just going to stack these three together using multimedia matte adhesive so that it has three layers to it. It just gives it that extra, you know, depth and dimension and whatnot. So I'm going to get all those stacked together to give it that little extra weight and it just helps it stand out a little bit more. I really, I really like stacking my die cut sentiments. It just, it gives it an extra something. I don't know. It just looks better in my opinion. So got those three layers stacked together. And then for the remaining bit of the sentiment, I'm using the new um, Tiny Words stamp set that I was raving about in the release and review video. Love this set. They're so tiny. There's so many in here. So I have the happy birthday sentiment from this set. And I discovered that, that you can heat emboss them. I wasn't sure because I'm like, they're so small. I don't know. But Rangers super fine detail embossing powders work and that's what I use here I use the super fine detail white this embossing powder I only like for really tiny things I don't like it anything with more depth or thicker lines or whatever I don't like this embossing powder because it's too fine you just you end up with kind of a splotchy look but for little tiny baby sentiments like this or just really fine fine detail images this embossing powder is great so that's what I used I used my anti-static powder tool I stamped the little happy birthday stamp with Simon's clear embossing ink. I used the super fine detail white embossing powder, melted that with my heat tool, and then I'm gonna just trim down this little strip here with my paper trimmer. And then um, that background paper I'm using was actually wrapping paper that Simon had wrapped the release in when they had sent it to me. And it's just, I love the balloons. I love the colors. This, uh, this paper's, I think it's from Paper Source. We don't have those in Canada, so we don't get the fun options for near the fun options anyway in my opinion for random like wrapping paper and stuff and I just loved it and I wanted to make a card using that just as part of the you know celebration so I trimmed down that balloon pattern paper down to a2 card size so it's four and a quarter by five and a half I just used the largest of Simon's um, basic rectangle wafer die for that and then I die cut some vellum from one of the smaller rectangles because I wanted to mute the paper a little bit um, for all these images and then I adhered all of those die cut picture book food characters with multimedia matte adhesive as well as the large happy die cut word just making sure not to apply too much adhesive because you don't want it oozing out or anything because it's really obvious on vellum so I got everything adhered first and then I'm going to use that multimedia matte to adhere this to the balloon paper and when I do that, I'm just going to apply adhesive behind all those images so that you can't see any of that adhesive through the vellum. So just making sure to put it behind the images and directly behind the sentiment. And again, not, you know, not putting so much glue that it's going to ooze out and you're going to see it. Because you'll see in a minute before I apply some of the sequins how apparent adhesive shows through vellum. And I, do, I always get emails, people asking about this and recommending there's like, you know, certain adhesives that claim to work with vellum. I honestly, I have yet to ever see one that works really well. Just personal preference. I just, I prefer hiding it like this. It works better. So applied my adhesive, stuck some acrylic blocks on top of this to let it dry. And then I'm just going to use my Zyron Mega Runner to add adhesive to the back of this panel so that I can adhere it to my card base, which is heavyweight white cardstock cut to four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half. So it'll be a top folding A2 size card. And since I die cut this um, pattern paper with the largest of the Simon Basic Rectangle dies, that largest die in their set is four and a quarter by five and a half. Um, that's another thing people ask about. And yeah, that die is a full A2 card size. And then for the inside, I actually pulled out this oldie but goodie little birthday set. This is the um, birthday messages stamp set that was, was released years ago. Still available, so I'll have a link to it. But yeah, the sentiment says this calls for cake and ice cream, which I thought was rather fitting with all these cute little images. So I stamped that on the inside of the card with uh, Mermaid Lagoon Distress Oxide Ink. And then as a little final bit of embellishments, I'm using the new Party Time sequins. Kind of sprinkled those on my card. It just so happened like the colors were so perfect with these images. 
So I kind of sprinkled those and then I just used little dabs of the multimedia matte and I'm just picking the sequins or the confetti up with my crystal katana. And then in these couple places here, I just applied tiny little dabs of glue and you can see, you can immediately see the glue through and even after it dries, you can still see it. But I just did a couple tiny little dabs and then I'm going to adhere those sequins right over those glue dabs so that you can't see them. So that's another way to kind of conceal if you want to adhere um, vellum to things is hide them behind images, hide them behind embellishments, etc. So I did that on the other side as well, put a couple little tiny dots. I'm going to adhere the sequins into place and that's going to finish off my card. So I will have links below the video to my blog post. I'll have links to all of the supplies used. I'll have a couple links to um, the videos I talked about at the very end here that'll be in the upper right hand corner. Stay tuned, I have more videos coming, all kinds of surprises, so much fun stuff. So stay tuned, I will have tons coming over this whole month of Stamptember. I'm so excited. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.